Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to teach you all about configuring your settings in Gorilla Desk. So let's get started. The first tab in our settings we're going to talk about will be our company settings. And why is this important? The company settings is the company settings tab is where you'll enter all of your company's information, such as your email, phone, address, time zone, date format, and currency. This is also where you can add your company logo. The company information is the information that will display on all of your paperwork, so it's extremely important to make sure it's up to date. Clicking Edit Company will allow you to configure this information. And below, you can click Upload Logo to add your company logo. Next, we're going to look at our Users tab. And this is where you can make user accounts for your team. Once they have an account created, they'll use that information to log in and access Gorilla Desk. To create a user, you can click on New User. This is where you'll enter in their information as well as set up their login credentials. And this is the information that they'll use to log into Gorilla Desk. Other than the super admin, which is the primary account holder, there are two other types of user types. We have admins and technicians. Admin users typically have a bit more access to some of Gorilla Desk's functions than the technicians. Their role is typically focused around scheduling and invoicing, so they'll have the ability to see every technician's schedule. You can modify each admin's permissions by clicking the Modify Permissions button. And check or uncheck the bo box next to each area you'd like your admin to have access to. And this can be customized per individual user. Technician users will typically be the users out in the field. The main difference between a tech and an admin is that a tech can only see the schedules they're assigned to, whereas an admin can see all of the schedules. If you're going to be out in the field, but will also need to see other technician schedules to assist with scheduling, I'd recommend creating an admin account for yourself rather than a tech. And just like the admin, you can modify permissions by checking or unchecking boxes next to each area. Below, you can also choose an avatar for each user, or you can upload your own. And the avatar will appear whenever that user leaves any notes, and it'll also appear when viewing the map. Let's head over to our Schedules tab. In Gorilla Desk, our billing model is based off of the amount of schedules rather than users. You can actually have unlimited user accounts. A schedule is essentially equal to a route for a technician in the field. So if you have three techs in the field, all with their own routes, you would want three schedules. You can add or remove schedules at any time by clicking the avatar in the upper right corner then clicking Upgrade Plan. From here, you can move the slider to adjust the amount of schedules you'd like on your plan. And any plan changes will be prorated on the following month's bill. And here you can choose between the Basic or Pro while adjusting your slider. So now that your users are created, this is where you can assign users to each schedule. The nickname is how that schedule will appear on your calendar, and this is typically the technician's first name. Adding a start and end address is basically telling the software where your technician will start and end their day. This is also required for the mapping function to work. At the very bottom, you also have the option to batch reassign jobs from one schedule to the other if you need. And schedule groups offer a way to group your schedules together on the calendar based off of the tags you create. For example, we're using geographic location for our schedule groups here. So we have schedule one is tagged with north and east, two is tagged with north and south, and three is tagged with west. Let's quickly jump back to our calendar just to see how this will look. Okay, so right now we're just looking at Blake's schedule, so only one schedule, 
However, if you click up here, you can see all three of the schedules available and above you can see our schedule groups. So if we are scheduling and we want to schedule in the north area, you can click on our group and it will show you that Blake and Jane's schedule are both tagged with that group. So we can update schedule or update calendar rather and view both of their schedules at once. So now we're actually going to jump to our methods tab and we'll revisit items, taxes, and services in just a bit. The methods tab is where you can add in a custom payment method that you'll be able to choose from when adding a payment to an invoice. Gorilla Desk integrates with Stripe and Square for credit card transactions. However, you could always add a custom payment method here that you can select when adding a payment to an invoice. For example, you could add PayPal as a custom payment method. Okay, we'll jump over to our sources. And adding sources is essentially adding the different platforms where your customer heard about you. This could be word of mouth, LinkedIn, etc. To create a source, simply click new source. And in this case, we'll actually create one called LinkedIn. And whenever you're adding a customer, you'll have the option to choose a source from your list. For example, if we're adding a new customer, one of the options here will be to choose a source, and we can actually see that we've added LinkedIn to our list. This information can also be used when running a revenue by service report, or revenue by source report, rather. So that would be under reports, then revenue by source. The Templates tab is where you can choose which information you would like displayed on your paperwork. For invoices, estimates, and work orders, we offer two different templates to choose from. We have the Modern and the Classic template with a little bit different layouts. On the right, you can preview each template as a PDF. Below, you have the option to change the invoice, estimate, and work order titles if you'd like. For example, you could change invoice to bill if you'd like. Or maybe you'd like to call your estimates quotes. Or perhaps a work order you'd like to call a service ticket. So entirely up to you. That can be customized right here on this page. The company address will appear in the upper left corner of your paperwork. And you also have the option to show or hide the service address, location address name, check in and out, and the weather. You can even show a pay stub at the bottom as well. Let's take a look at one of our invoices. So we're going to preview a PDF. You'll see the company address up here. We have the check in and out time. We have a pay stub. And we actually use our invoice title here. We could have set that to bill or anything else that we would like displayed at the top. And then again, you can see the materials displayed in a table down here. And as always, when you're finished, always click Save to save your changes. The Tiles tab allows you to customize which information will be displayed on your job tiles. You can have up to 10 different fields and you can choose the order in which they're displayed. So perhaps we wanted to show the service type at the top of our tile instead of calendar time. So we can actually swap these two. We're going to change calendar time to service type. So it will read the customer's name and then whatever their service is. And then below we can actually change this to calendar time. Okay, so this is totally customizable however you would like that displayed, uh, whichever is best for your workflow. We're actually going to navigate out of our settings just for a moment to take a quick look at our material usage master list 
and how you can completely customize it. We're going to open our add-ons and then open material usage. Your account should come preloaded with all of these materials already. However, you can always add to this list by clicking the plus sign. You can edit by clicking here and you can delete by clicking on the trash can. So this page is completely customizable and you can even change the headers of the columns. So maybe instead of materials, you prefer it be called chemicals. You also have the option to hide materials on the invoice and you can show the key in the work order footer. And we'll see this a little bit more in just a bit. At the very bottom, you can also add footer text, which will show under the master key on your invoices. So this could be any critical material information or anything else you'd like to include there. Now we're going to jump back over to our taxes tab. And this is where you'll have the ability to create taxes in your Gorilla Desk account, which can be applied to items on your invoices. For example, maybe a state or a commercial tax. To create a tax, click on new tax, give your tax a name, and then set a tax rate. Then click save. The items tab is where you can start creating the various items you'll be billing your customers for. So items are the line items that can be added onto an invoice. For example, you may want to add a bed bug item, a callback service item, mosquito treatment, etc. Basically, anything you would like to appear on your customer's invoice can be added here. Once added, you'll be able to, to add line items to an invoice by simply selecting them from a drop down menu. To create a new item, click here. Then give your item a name, add a, add a description if you'd like, and set a default cost. This can be fine-tuned per customer once their invoice has been created. However, this is intended to be a, a general cost. Then you can add default taxes per item if you'd like as well. And that's going to pull from our tax list that we just looked at over here. The Services tab is where you can customize one of GorillaDesk's most powerful features, the Service Template. Service Templates are predefined templates that you'll use to create jobs on your calendar. I'd like to mention that these are not jobs yet, but they will be the foundation for creating your jobs. We have a few templates preloaded for you, but you can certainly make your own as well. So let's go ahead and make one together. We're going to click on New Service. And for this example, we're going to call the service monthly general service. And all the information that we'll cover in the template uh, can be customized once the job is actually created. For now, we're just trying to establish our default settings while we build the template. Below, you can set the default length, which we'll leave at 30 minutes. Next, we'll need to set the frequency. In this case, I would like my service to repeat monthly by the day of the week. So we're going to choose monthly. You can also have it repeat by the day of the month as well. So if you schedule the first job on the 15th of the month, for example, and you have it repeating monthly by the day of the month, each month it's going to fall on the 15th, regardless of what day of the week that falls on. In my case, I prefer it to repeat by the day of the week, meaning the fir first Monday of the month or the second Tuesday, however you'd like. You have the option for your monthly service to end never, after a certain number of jobs, or on a specific date. You can also add exceptions for any, perhaps any winter months or slow months that can be added in here. Below, you can choose if you would like your service to automatically start out as always confirmed or always unconfirmed. So always confirmed would be yes, always unconfirmed would be no. If it's an interior service where the customer needs to be home, 
you may want to set the default to always confirmed no, meaning you should probably should get confirmation from the customer before heading out to that job. However, if the type of service is an exterior service and the customer does not need to be home, you can have the job start out as always confirmed. Yes, meaning you don't have to confirm that with the customer every time. And it will always start out in confirm status. We won't discuss job statuses very much in this video, but you can always reference our job status video available in our library. On the next tab, you can assign default materials to your template as well. And these can certainly be edited out in the field, but if you know there's always a material that you generally use, you can assign that to your template and save you or your tech a step out in the field. In this case, we'll just add a material and we'll add aerosol. However, you'll see that if you click, it will pull from that master material list that we previously looked at. That's probably why I would recommend configuring that first if there's anything else you wanted to add. Next, you can assign a default invoice and or estimate. So let's actually create an invoice together and assign that to this template. And before we continue, we often get asked, what is the difference between items and services? And a lot of times they actually have pretty similar naming conventions and I'll show you why. So the service templates are the entire job template that you'll use to schedule on your calendar. This includes the frequency, the materials, along with an invoice or an estimate if you create one. The line item is simply the item that you can add to an invoice or an estimate. So essentially it's what you're billing your customers for. You'll see that when we're adding an item to an invoice, it will allow us to choose from our item list that we created previously. And the reason they generally have quite similar naming conventions are because uh, if you have a monthly general service, template and you have an invoice attached to that, you might want to be billing them for general service. So in this case, I believe I have one already created here. Yep. General service. Okay, so really the service template is everything included here, the frequency, materials, and an invoice. A line item is simply the item that you're just adding to an invoice. So basically what the customer is paying for. You can also add additional items to your invoice and even assign one as a one-time line item. So in this case, we'll actually add another item. <clears throat> I have an initial service item already created, so we're going to choose that. And to make it a one-time line item, click here. And this is great when adding an initial service charge if you want it only to apply to the first invoice. So once this invoice is paid, the initial service will drop off and the future invoices for that customer will just continue with this general pest item. Below you can set default notes and terms by clicking here and then clicking here. And this information will show up, your default terms and notes will show up on all of your invoices and your work orders. And when you're all finished editing your template, you can save your changes. Once we start adding jobs to the calendar, we'll get to show you how powerful the service templates are and how they come to life. I know that's quite a bit to cover in one video, but thank you guys so much for hanging in there. In the next videos, we'll be discussing creating jobs on the desktop and mobile app, as well as invoicing on both as well, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, that should be everything you need to know about understanding each of the settings in Gorilla Desk. If you have any questions, you can reach us at 855-536-7470 or start a live chat and we'll be more than happy to help. Have a great day.